I'm back again. Hopefully this one is going out live and direct and is all good. For some reason, my Wi-Fi decided to turn itself off, always the way. But hey, life happens to all of us. Um, so, like I said, it's all about feeling good enough, but also finding, I would encourage you to find, to pinpoint, to be clear about who are the people who may benefit from you not feeling good enough about who you are because those people are going to be highly likely that they're going to be the most resistant to your change and we need to be very clear about that very clear indeed because we don't want to be used by people we don't want because it's a drain yeah it's an absolute drain and some people they deliberately target people in order to use them abuse them and to ride off of them and some people let's be very honest they don't want to take responsibility for themselves and so they're always looking out for someone who they can victimize and the only way that that can work is if we play into that and if we allow that and so that's why i'm so adamant about us taking responsibility for ourselves because if we don't take responsibility for ourselves people will violate us and and that is just the reality of life like things can change your situations can change but ultimately the change starts here often sometimes i have wanted other people to change like why do they treat me like that why don't they value me why don't they appreciate me well the reality is do you pre appreciate yourself enough Because the reality is, if you don't appreciate yourself enough, then people will just continue, continuously decide to take liberties with you. And I think what one of another challenge is also to be aware that just because you have a bond with someone or things started epically well and great and your confidence was good, like you were good in yourself, but the nonsense behavior starts. Don't be letting no think no, no bond should keep you in bondage yeah because i get it it's difficult we you know it's not all the time you meet someone who you connect with and then you connect with them and then everything's going well oh it's all good everything's lovely and then all of a sudden the nonsense behavior starts now listen if the nonsense behavior starts us feeling good enough is incredibly important because the reason it's so important is because if you know, not only know, but you have to honor what you know. Because I hear enough people singing about, I feel good enough, I feel good enough, you know, I love myself, feeling myself, yeah. However, you fall for somebody and you like them and the nonsense starts, that's when you're gonna be tested. And that's when you're gonna get a measure of your self-worth, when you care and like somebody. And so we have to work on ourselves internally. However, the way that you work out how much progress you'll make is the decisions you choose to make when people start with their nonsense, when they try to violate or they come with an epic story, another excuse, another reason why they're letting you down, then feeling good enough is incredibly important because that's where you'll be like, bozo, that's a no-go. Not me, not today, because we've been there, we've got the t-shirt and we've learned the harsh life lessons. We have to take responsibility for ourselves. And people don't like this, but ultimately people treat us how we teach them to treat us. It's now 28, 8.32. If you have any further questions, either inbox me, I have my laptop here, or ask below. If you're watching on the replay, hashtag replay. This is massive. Feeling good enough sets the tone for the quality of your life. And this just is not about intimate relationships. This covers all areas of your life. But for me personally, it came up most acutely in my intimate relationships where I really got a measure. I really got a measure of how much like I didn't rate myself, you know, so that is inter like incredibly important 
for us to, to, to be aware of. And that will impact on our jobs. Have you ever been in a job where you're working at a certain level and you've seen like people in management or senior positions and you just knew you could have had the capacity to do that, but you couldn't get the leverage? I get it. I totally understand it. And that often is about how we portray ourselves because not feeling good enough also can be picked up on in our language. So how we talk about ourselves, little subtle put downs. Do you do little subtle put downs about yourself? Do you like play small? Do you chastise yourself? And if you do that, then you need to be very careful because when you call yourself names, when you belittle yourself, all you're doing is giving other people permission to do the same. And that is a factor that would actually feed into why people overlook you, why people may over, over, overlook you, why people sideline you or why people treat you poorly. Also, ladies, gentlemen, no matter what, we have to audit our phones, check who is in your mobile device, who makes you feel bad, who also feeds into you not feeling good enough. Because ultimately, the reality of you feeling good enough shows up in your behaviour. And if your behaviour suggests that you don't rate you, people will pick up on that. And so let's, to finish, like, my three tips for you feeling good enough about yourself, starting to feel good enough about yourself, would be, I would encourage you to audit your phone in the first instance. You need to audit your phone to see who may be in your phone who feeds into you not feeling good enough. Secondly, you may want to choose to either distance yourself from that person or you may want to practice boundaries. Now, if you're not sure about what boundaries are, I'll put a link below to my YouTube channel where I have a video about the importance of personal boundaries. Now remember, when we put boundaries in place, there's likely to be what I call relationship casualties. Them is the people who benefit from you having poor boundaries. These are the people we lend money, do favours for, we give, give, give and never get back. So when we put boundaries in place, it's highly likely that they will abandon us or kick off or actually try to ridicule us. My encouragement to you is don't take the bait. The reason why they are not happy about your change is because they benefit from you being the old way. So that's the second tip about how to start to feel good enough. And another tip, a last tip, and I think one of the things that I've developed over the years, and I think my business has been very helpful for that as well. Like, you know, you know, I'm very fortunate. I have a business that I help others and others help me. And I'm unashamed about that. I believe it's a very beautiful cycle. Is self-care. Like, what do you do for self-care to feel good enough? You know, there was a time in my life when I used to think I wasn't good enough to go to certain places. And um, I used to always drive past this big estate in Watford and I never knew what it was, but it was called The Grove. And I used to think, oh my God, I bet really rich people go in there and I can't go in there and so on and so forth. Christine, I feel you, sister. It's a journey, yeah? Remember, growing to feel good about yourself, it's a journey. So take time with yourself and learn the lessons. And if there's anything you can do, I would encourage you to buy a journal, buy a book, and start to write down what you say to yourself because your inner dialogue is of paramount importance to us. It's of paramount importance to us when we're journeying. So, like I said, I used to pass a place called, it was called The Grove, and I never knew what it was. I later found out it was a hotel and a golf course. And when I graduated, I decided that that was where I wanted to go because I felt inferior I felt like I shouldn't people like me didn't go to places like that 
And so the only way that I could work through it was to actually like, I could read and write about like feeling good enough all day long. You know, I'd studied psychology, but the only way for me to truly know that I was good enough to go in that place was to go in the place. And that's exactly what I did. I went and I had my graduation dinner there when I, with my family and we just chilled for the day. And what that did when I faced my fear is it became reduced. And then I'd go to the Grove for high teas with friends. It didn't become, it wasn't a big deal. But the reason it wasn't a big deal was because I had the experience. So you have to, my encouragement to you, no one has to do anything. Is whatever you fear is what you need to face. There's a great book by a guy called Ryan Holiday. And this was one of the books that made me face my fear in terms of leaving my job at the probation service was the obstacle is the way whatever it is that you're fearful of whatever it is that you're frightened of it's that monster that we have to look in the face in order to chase down that demon so i don't know what that means for you i don't know what you might be going through if you do have any questions i'm gonna give it five more minutes like Beginning to feel good enough, especially, you know, the more the older we are, is the more entrenched, the more habitual, the more normal it is for us not to feel good. And so when we change, like I said, people will have a problem with that. And sometimes that can be people who are the closest to us in our families and so on. They'll, they may well be resistant to your change. And one of the things that was really helpful to me as I transitioned and sometimes found myself in no man's land was my mentor. I've always had mentors to assist me and to guide me through. And so, you know, my dear friends, you've left that comment like, I like the pain, the struggle is real. If you have any questions, feel free to put them below. The struggle is massively real and there are so many forces that will be pushing you back to normal. And one of the features that I have in my Feel Love program is visualization. So we look at what is it that you want to achieve? Yeah. Because when I was, you know, in my darkest hour in a hostel, like I had a vision for something different. And I was perplexed. Keely was perplexed about how the hell I was going to achieve it because I'm like, listen, how are we going to do this? How? And what I've realized on my journey, which I believe is spiritual, is that the house take care of themselves. Don't watch the house. Your duty is to set the goal, set the agenda for yourself. Trust that thing inside that knows you can do and have better and to honor that. Keep following the breadcrumbs that take you in the direction of something that you are passionate about, that you love that you can just spend ages and ages doing by stating this i've lost friends and family i'm lonely and broken but i'm feeling that it will get better just don't want to go back there's a beautiful um song called it's a, it's a gospel song I, i'll put a link to it called i can't go back to where i used to be your love has come and changed me and that's one of the reasons why I believe the journey is spiritual, because it can be incredibly lonely. And at points when you start to put boundaries in place and then the wheat from the chaff are separated, it can be very it can be very concerning that, geez, wow, these these people were here as long as I kept doing X, they would have stayed around. And when I've stopped they've bounced and and you know what that that is the reality that is the reality and it's an uncomfortable lesson to learn but um better you learn it because intuitively you would have known it if you're intuitive you would have known it at some intuitive level so when it now happens your intuitive knowledge and your experience in are now, now lining up and what you're experiencing there, Christine, is you're experiencing grief. And grief has five stages. 
I think I've got a video about that somewhere. And so it's okay that it's not okay. As dear Whitney said, it's not right, but it's okay. Cause we're going to make it anyway. My encouragement to you is journey. Keep journey. And remember, this is not a sprint. It's a marathon. Rest in peace, Nipsey Hussle. It's a marathon. And so when you're transitioning, you find yourself in this place of feeling like buddy no mates. You're with yourself all the time. And I think the beauty of that now, in hindsight, now I look back, is that you are developing a relationship with yourself because I hope what will happen to you is that you'll realise it's cool to be with me. It's cool to do time with you, yeah? Because some of us out there hate ourselves and the thought of being lonely, yeah man, give me some likes and thumbs because that makes Key want to stay till nine, is the beauty of that is that if someone wants to leave you, well, you know what, bro? I'm good because I can do me, you know? I'm not scared of being alone because actually sometimes, you've had that, when you get over the thing about being alone, sometimes you have quite a good time just on your own, just going at your own pace, exploring the world if you want to. And, and you know, that's something that's, it's a bit like why I go, I've been carnival on my own before. Is because actually I just enjoy going where my feet take me and where my interests take me rather than following a kind of rigid route. And so my sister, like, journey, keep journeying because who is true will be there and who isn't will drop off. And it will hurt. And as Usher Raymond says, let it burn. Sometimes you've just got to let it burn. And you, you will come out the other side, you know, but trust that this is a part of the process. And I've heard this a little bit more now in like um, pop psychology, I call it. Um, trust the process. This is a journey, sister. Yeah. Like I said, this is a marathon. This ain't no sprint. So it's, it's okay. And... Loneliness, what would I say about loneliness? Be mindful of loneliness because sometimes loneliness can have us unblocking and um, revisiting the phone. And some, sometimes, sometimes that's not healthy for us. So be careful of loneliness because sometimes loneliness, if I think back about my own situation, has jolted me to go backwards and I don't beat myself up about going backwards. Sometimes we backslide and that's cool. Like life happens, yeah? It's not about chastising ourselves when we go backwards. It's about trying to understand what was going on for me at that time. Where was I vulnerable? And getting curious about that, you know, because there's lessons in that. I believe there's lessons in everything. So even if you feel like you're selling yourself short, and you, yes, Vicky, sometimes you just got to let it burn, sister. Let it burn. Let it burn. And sometimes we... Um, I've lost my train of thought. Vicky, you took me off my train of thought. Um, you've got to watch loneliness. Because sometimes we get into habits. Maybe if I think about relationships, Friday nights, it might be a time that you see that person and your brain starts like thinking about them and you miss them. And that's okay, you know? Um, it's okay to miss people but that doesn't necessarily mean that we have to engage with them especially if they're no good for us you know and we've also got to watch if we stigmatize ladies ladies there's only ladies out here i can see that are watching me tonight sorry to the men if you're there um but we've got to be careful of the of this of the grind because if the grind and the wine is making you feel fine then you know your lady flower may also be hindering your decision making process and that may mean for example should we feel lonely we let the lady flower dictate dictate uh, our decisions and sometimes we have to get that part of us under control shelly shelly says true has made me more vulnerable 
I'm not too sure what you mean. Ah, big up Clayton. Um, um, I'm I'm not too sure about kind of like what you mean with regards to um, being, but maybe it might be about being lonely. And that's one of the benefits because for me, when I transitioned, that's all right, Vicky, um, it's all good. Um, it's just very tricky doing this. Um, but um, one of the things that I transitioned was I got very, well, I began to study. So I began to channel my energy into understanding the situation I'd got from. So I began to, to read psychology books. And so that gave me a purposeful distraction. So we have to be careful because sometimes we get a distraction that creates more problems. So if you're someone who does retail therapy, well, we know that that will lead often, depending on your finances, that can lead to debt. So we also have to be careful about what we choose to do to distract ourselves from our situation. You know, when I went through my mayhem, my ambition was to understand it so I could get it so I didn't repeat the pattern. I was I was more baffled that I'd got myself into that situation. So I don't really regard my studying as a form of distraction. I think it gave me purpose and it made meaning. I made meaning out of my experience. But if you guys, like, if you're not feeling good enough, like, be careful of distractions because loneliness can be a tricky one sometimes. Sometimes with loneliness, we're avoiding sitting with ourselves. And avoidance of self, avoidance of being with self, is, um, well, let's put it this way. It, it can feed into neediness and uh, a loathing of having to be with oneself, which might mean we can't let bad boy Fred walk out the door because if you leave Fred, I'm only going to be left with me. And actually, Fred, I don't even like who I am. And I needed you because you sort of like me ish. Well, when you was having a good day, you know, when you're in a good mood, you like me. So Fred, come back. Fred, come back. And, and actually that paves way for uh, a, a relationship a roller, well, let's call it a roller coaster of a relationship. You know, that, that saying that I've often heard, which is when it's good, it's good. And when it's bad, it's bad. Yeah. So what about, you know, good, it's good, bad, it's bad. Or what about consistency? You know, because that's always helpful as that's, I guess for me, that's the aim is consistency. It's not about these kind of extremes, because if you're anything like myself, extremes, situations can be very um mind-boggling and can take time for us to get out of so i'm mindful of the time i'm gonna bring this to a close i hope it's been beneficial to you if so do consider sharing with a friend don't forget about the hashtag replay and if you're someone who is concerned about not feeling good enough if you feel that your life has been limited and your potential you know you can do more it's a bit like when i was on the Yes, Miss Poodle. It's a bit like when I was on the tills at Ikea. Like, you know when you knew you, you could do more? Left school with no, quality, no no GCSEs or nothing. But I really knew that I could do so much more with my life. You're welcome, Christine. And um, it was about me taking a chance and believing in me. And that's one of the secrets. Is often when we don't feel good enough, we believe in others. We invest all our time and our energy and sometimes our dough. And, um, you know, we believe in them and we don't believe in us. And I think one of the secrets to life is to believe in yourself and to take action. Fundamentally, it's about taking the action to honour that part of you and then seeing what happens. Because if I can be here today from an idea, a seed that I have nurtured so many years ago, then why can't that be you too? Thank you for joining me for this Facebook Live if you do the replay, put a hashtag in there for your girl key and don't forget to share. Take care of you, because if you don't, who will?